Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I created this rhinestone duckling using a 3D tumbler sleeve from Dimensional Drinks. Now this is inspired by our, our little duck, Daffodil. She was the cutest little duckling with yellow on her chest and around her eyes. She is my daughter's favorite and I wanted to create a tumbler that looked like her. So I know these color choices are a little bit different, of course, than your traditional yellow duckling. So you may not want to create this exact one, but you can take all this information and pick your own colors that you love. So we have our little duckling sleeve from Dimensional Drinks. As I mentioned before in my first 3D tumbler tutorial, I love what Dimensional Drinks is doing with the tumbler sleeves. These 3D creations are really popular right now. And for creators like me that cannot <laughs> mold a piece of clay to save my life, these sleeves are awesome because it allows us to get creative. It allows us to make something dimensional without having to try to attempt to mold a duck or a book or whatever it may be onto our tumblers. So the first thing that you want to do is prep your sleeve and your tumbler. The sleeve itself, you actually don't have to sand or anything like that, but if you are wanting to do a solid color without any glitter or use a extra fine glitter on top of this, you definitely want to just go ahead and pop this onto a turner. Add up a coat of epoxy so it eliminates all of those little lines from the 3D printer and then you can begin to decorate it. If you plan on adding on rhinestones or a chunkier glitter, you can definitely skip that step. Go ahead and paint your duck whatever color you may want for your base and then you'll want to paint your tumbler if that's going to be a different color and then attach those two together by liquid fusion or epoxy, allow that to dry, and then you can proceed with either adding on your epoxy to seal everything in before you add on your rhinestones or glittering your tumbler and duckling. I very well could have attached my duck to my tumbler prior to painting, but I am going to be adding on some decals to the tumbler and I want those decals to go into the duck so you don't see that cutoff line at the bottom. And speaking of tumblers, we are using a 16 ounce plump from the Tipsy Magnolia. This tumbler can also be converted just by the swap of a lid to a Slim Can Coolsy as well as a HydroFit tumbler. So I love that Tipsy Magnolia offers all kinds of different lids that fit their tumblers and makes them very versatile and really helps with sales because your customer gets to choose the lid they want to put on their cup. We're just going to give this two coats of Green Gardens from the Crystal Light Company using a all over makeup brush to get really nice smooth coverage. Now, I had planned on putting my yellow rhinestones directly onto that black, but then I got a little concerned of placement and not really getting things even. So, I very roughly painted some yellow onto the duckling so that I would have somewhat of a guide on where to put my yellow rhinestones and try to get them as even as possible in the center of the duck on the chest and alongside the eyes.
Once I had my yellow painted on, then I just set that to the side and we're going to add our daffodils to our tumbler. Of course, we are going to use Creative Fabrica, which is my absolute favorite platform to grab any fonts or designs that I need for my tumblers and other projects. Creative Fabrica has over 7 million fonts and other images and graphics that are available on their website. All you have to do is type in what you're searching for, which in my case was daffodils. It pulls up all of these different graphics that you can download with the click of a button. You can also save them to your profile if you find something cute in the middle of your search and you want to save that for later. And once you hit that green download button, it is actually going to save that in your downloads and license keys folder as well because you have commercial license to use everything on Creative Fabrica. I absolutely love this feature because I know on other platforms it is kind of frustrating having to really dig through the details on a file or font to make sure that it is legal for you to use in your business. And with Creative Fabrica, you have no doubts. It is all yours once you download that and you can use it however you like. If you don't have Creative Fabrica, I highly encourage you give it a shot. If you click the link down below in the description, you can get Creative Fabrica free for the first month or your first 10 downloads are free, whichever comes first. And then after your trial ends, it is $9 a month, which is half the price of one single download for some of these florals that I use in my shop. All right, so I imported all of those images into my Cricut Design Space and just resize them to fit my tumbler. I cut those on the new Tech Wrap Craft printable vinyl, which is my absolute favorite. I have used Hay Butter Crafts vinyl for a long time, and it has been my favorite, but Tech Wrap Craft definitely iced the cake with their new vinyl. Once I have all of these on here, I'm going to seal that in twice with Rust-Oleum Matte Clear Coat so we don't get any bubbles on top of our vinyl. Since it is a paper-like texture, it is porous, so if you put epoxy directly over top of any of your printable vinyl, you are going to get some micro bubbles. So always seal that in and then you can go in with your epoxy. Now, I did make a huge mistake here and think that the duck was going to sit stationary on top of my regular setting epoxy. I would 100% recommend that you use either a fast setting epoxy or liquid fusion and put that on the inside of your dimensional sleeve. Place your tumbler down inside of that and allow that to sit and completely dry before adding on epoxy like I did because for like the next three hours I had to constantly go back and make sure the duck was still in place on the tumbler and didn't fall off. It just spun in circles until the epoxy started setting up. So definitely use your liquid fusion or a fast setting epoxy. Put your sleeve down or your sleeve onto your tumbler and allow that to sit on a silicone mat until it is dry. I used a little extra incorporated regular epoxy and I did give this two coats before I added on my rhinestones. I really like a little extra ink epoxy because number one, it is a faster curing regular setting epoxy. For me, it's dry to the touch within four hours, which is an incredible time for a regular epoxy and it has a 
high shine that I just don't feel like can be beat with any other. And they do also have a turbo epoxy, which sets a little bit quicker than their regular at about two to two and a half hours. I'm going to be using transparent rhinestones, so I want the highest shine underneath my rhinestones as possible. I wanted to show you these awesome 3D printed rhinestone tools from Imagination 3D. They have this awesome tray and a sifter for your rhinestones. So I took a lot of my transparent rhinestones in different sizes and placed them in the tray, poured them directly into my sifter and give it a little shake and it sorts all of the rhinestones out so you don't have to worry about keeping a mix, having individual trays for each size rhinestones or picking each one of those out by hand. It just does it for you and you can take all of these little trays out, dump your rhinestones back into the correct size container. All of the rhinestones we're using are from PDB Creative Studio, and we are using SS20, 16, 10, 6, and 4. That is all the sizes that are available at PDB Creative Studio. And even if you are just planning on doing a honeycomb method, which is what we are going to be doing for the tumbler part, I highly recommend getting the smaller stones just in case your customer wants to have a name on their rhinestone tumbler or if you're going to work around an object like I am such as this tumbler sleeve you need those stones to fill in the gaps in between your larger stones and the duckling. I gave this a light sand so my glue will have something to grab a hold of and wipe that off with a damp cloth to get any of the dust and debris off of my tumbler. We're going to start at the rim of the tumbler, which I'm going to use the SS20 rhinestones for. Again, we are doing the honeycomb method. I'm not going to go into a tremendous amount of detail as far as rhinestones go. I just really wanted to show you how to attach the sleeve to the tumbler and decorate before we add it on the rhinestones. I have a couple very detailed tutorials on the honeycomb method, which is the most simple method for adding rhinestones, as well as scatter method. So if you need help in either of those areas, and we're going to skip through most of that here, I'm just going to show you the basics. I will have those tutorials linked down below for you. I have done tumblers, keychains, all kinds of different things so that will definitely help you out so the first thing we're going to do is go around the top rim as i said and then we're going to allow that to dry once we have flipped this tumbler over and got all of the rhinestones nice and flat that's going to be the base for all of our other rhinestones so you want to make sure that this row is straight
Now, my daffodils' eyes are black, and that definitely wouldn't have showed up on this. So we're going to do white eyes, and I'm taking a little SS16 black rhinestone to put in the center of the eyes. And then we're going to use our transparent rhinestones to fill in around our obsidian. Once again, I waited until the eyes were dry enough to where they would not move around while I'm moving the tumbler and adding on additional rhinestones. And then we went to add on our next rows of transparent stones on the tumbler. And to do that, I'm just going to go in between each of the previous stones, add on a little glue at a time so my glue does not dry. And repeat this step until I have all areas covered that I can with the SS20 rhinestones. Again, there is going to be smaller gaps that the SS20 rhinestones will fit in around the duckling, and that's what we're gonna use the smaller transparent rhinestones to fill in later.
Once we have all of our little filler stones around the edge of our duckling, I'm going to go in with obsidian and we're going to go around the top and the bottom edge with SS20 rhinestones. Now before we do add in these center black rhinestones, I do want to go in with my yellow to get those sections that I want it really bold and then we're going to blend out that yellow into our black and finish filling in our black. And we're using the Yellow Mermaid Tears from PDB Creative Studio. These are not offered in sizes. They're already mixed so I'm just going to grab what I need out of the container.
Once I finished my solid section, and I also did this for the chest area as well, when I got to the point that I wanted to start my black rhinestones, I did blend them out by just placing a couple black rhinestones and then going in with a couple yellow, just alternating back and forth, gradually working out the yellow so that we have the solid black sections.
fast forward lots of hours and we are finally finishing up all of our black rhinestones. I wanted to capture this last moment because there is nothing more satisfying with a rhinestone tumbler than those last few stones. And here she is all finished up. I love how she turned out and I know this might not be everyone's cup of tea, but my daughter was so happy with her little <laughs> daffodil. And I hope this tutorial has answered a few questions if you have any regarding the dimensional drinks tumbler sleeves, as well as just inspire you to think a little bit out of the box and grab your favorite tumbler sleeve and give a dimensional tumbler a shot. As always, all materials I have used will be listed in the description below with some coupon codes for you. That is all for today. Thank you all so much and we'll see you next time.